function. A couple of doves flying in front of the we, camera. We are lacking in the pyrotechnics a little bit. Oh, I know, but all right. If you want a south to north plane, then you got exactly what you wanted inside of this plane path. Got to keep our eyes on WTSG. Are they going to try the same drop? That they did last time was that something a little cheeky of course with the way the plane goes when it's this far over you're kind of forced to change your landing locations just based on how long it does take to get to some of those farther you know in this case western locations yes you might get a vehicle and be able to get there quickly but a lot of other teams are going to be vying for those vehicles you risk having somebody get run over or something like that these last minute adaptations surely a lot of these guys have like three or four different drop locations that they feel very very comfortable with but whenever you have to adapt late game, this is the problem. Like if you're a team like WTSG, you know a couple of these teams could be gunning for you at some point and may not necessarily hot drop you, but drop close to where you're known to drop at and really try to contest you on rotation. Weaken you so that way you can't get those points and give them the leg up so that way maybe they can move up in the leaderboard. Therefore, you start to see very, I would guess, sparse decision making whenever it comes into let's go back to the same places we're known for when you're in the lead and hey, Pretty centralized now, so everybody should be pretty happy. Still towards the north, but not not too crazy. That looks pretty familiar. Yeah, I mean, I'm not I, gonna lie. That uh, looks pretty familiar. This time, WTSG, of course, with this plane path, they are not going to go to that far right hand side of the map. This time, they're going back to their normal area. So we won't see anything, you know, super crazy this time around, Matt. I, this could end up very similar to game number one. Who knows what the way this circle is. So we talked about the fact that Toby was going to have a tri-cast later. Well, apparently he wants to have a little bit of a tri-cast now. He's going to be joining us as you can get a little bit of a listen in as he talks about it's going to be Singularity. I mean, given that I've had the pleasure of casting a lot of the teams playing recently and seeing a lot of them play, I must say the fact that we halfway through day two have two wins from Singularity, I don't care about Oh, well, maybe they got some circles here and there. Winning a game is still insanely difficult at this level of PUBG. I mean, you have seen teams on multiple occasions be able to sit dead center in circles, gifted, 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 and still get completely slaughtered in the end of game. So the fact that Singularity has come out with two wins already, that, that's going to be, that's honestly pretty surprising to me. Very, very true. Often you see people be like, oh, well, it's circle luck, and look how favorable they got. They just got handed that win. Shut your mouth if you say that, because <laughs> we have some of the top teams in the world that are trying to kill you and take that spot from you. So there's no amount of circle luck that can help you. Sometimes you do get some favor with it, but you still need to make sure you get the kills, you need to survive, and you have a ton of people trying to take you down whenever you have those spots. Right. If you're given the circle, you have to take advantage of it. Good. The, the best teams in the world will take advantage of the circles when they're given them and they will also take advantage of situations when they don't get the circles. That's what makes the great teams great. And so far, oh, this tournament, oh, no. no. No, not like this, Pony. Not like this. Just driving along, and then a random little rock comes along, and next thing you know, you find yourself in rotation. It's not going to be too bad, though. I mean, he's... Well, uh, he's... Uh, it, does he have any is teammates how that hungry back is STK right now is the real question, right? Well, I mean, they just heard a buggy that was driving and then randomly stopped, so they might decide to go with something. But Pony's not too far away from his teammates. They're really, they have a lot of territory control around this area, so I wouldn't be too concerned for him. He should be perfectly fine. OMK is doing a, well, a little bit of a reposition of their own right now, driving through, and it looked like a vehicle rotation, actually, where they're just going to pass off the vehicle to somebody else, maybe change out a little bit of looting, shoot to kill, a uh, very favorable circle to them. This is kind of like their backyard. We see them very often play in this location. Yeah, I'm, I, I want to watch SDK. We saw them in the first game on Miramar opt to go for some picks, try to get some kills early. It sort of worked out, but then it didn't as they were the first team eliminated actually in that last game. So this time it looks like they're, you know, they're going to set up along these crossroads to the east of Hacienda. Uh, at least for now, I'm sure there's still some more looting to be done as well, but maybe this is where they kind of want to set up shop and wait out this next circle. I'm going to be keeping my eyes on Team Liquid because Team Liquid has had a little bit of trouble with these first rotations, and they did manage to get away with it in the last game, but I like this. Go ahead and send EB out, scout it out, use those scopes, get some information, provide some covering fire on anybody that, that tries to take those shots at you, but look, we got some teams off to the side of this might decide to get a little bit crazy and take those shots towards them. As way off to the west, we can see that phase was rotating up, but it's about Liquid and how they choose to handle this because they're going to be running right next to... IG, and we talked about Oath playing around the graveyard area. They're going to be posted up as well. So 
Team Liquid looks like they're using that information from that last game, trying to make sure that, well, I should say that half a game, quarter of a game, whatever we saw, <laughs> yeah, and trying to yes. uh, make sure that they come in a little bit safer this time. Yeah, I, 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 kn I knew what you meant, and I was going to correct you anyway. But <laughs> so <laughs> Damn, paper. Hey, are You call out Sorry. a wrong city name. Uh, yeah, I don't okay. even say uh, nothing. All right, all right. And I just refer to, like, a restart as a game, and you're going to come after me. Man. I have that God. coming. You're right. I have that coming. No, I mean, Team Liquid, this is a team that, that was talked about in the pregame show as Feast or Famine. Why? A lot of that has to do with their desire to get aggressively center circle as soon as possible. And so that can cause problems because you can get caught out in rotation. You know, a lot of other teams want to get center circle. Teams that drop closer to the center are going to take the desirable locations ahead of you. So it, it becomes a little bit of, of a tricky situation to navigate. WTSG also getting a very nice position inside the circle. I mean, they're almost due up in the center, hanging out next to shoot to kill right now. So if you're one of the teams that's trying to get up and take that number one spot, this is something that's not going to make you too happy to see right now. Still spreading out just a touch as well as really everybody's kind of circling around the dew center, knowing the fact that this is where shoot to kill could play. And sometimes we see WTSG rotate here, giving it some a little bit of space, but exalt. Being very patient right now, Nylep is just waiting for IG to overstep just a little bit. He does have a little bit of reinforcement. It's going to be Monkey that's right back behind him. So the moment that IG decides that they want to go any further forward, they're just going to have a hail of bullets coming right into their face. And I like this coming out from Nylep. Don't commit quite yet. Here, if anybody else is coming in, sooner or later, these guys might decide to explore just a touch more. Now that they're moving towards the vehicles, this is the time that you take your shot. Zampeak instantly gets dropped off of that. Now, now looking around to the side of it, it's going to be Monkey's job to get the shots onto the vehicle as it rotates through. Oster Lobeck has to jump out of it, but now, finally, a little bit of support coming out from the side. Ooh, that grenade does take out the vehicle, so this is now even more challenging here for Osterlovac. He has the scar and some help, maybe, from the other members of IG if they want to come. I'm actually looking at the map, and it looks like he might be alone on an island. They might not actually come in. Now, uh, Omakin and some others are starting to put some pressure onto Exalt here, so this might allow him to get away. It's hard to say he's going to have to find the perfect timing because there is not a lot of room or there isn't a lot of cover for him to utilize, I should say. OMK okay, having a couple of shots taken at them as they're rotating down to regroup. It's going to be Atletico that's looking onto one angle from this and Exalt up on the high ground from it. So Exalt being very active in this stage of the game, not afraid to take on multiple skirmishes, to trying to keep one team back and away, make sure that they can at least maybe try to pick up another kill with IG's position. Or, yeah, IG's position off to the west of them. Yeah, wow, look at this split that WC. It looks like they kind of had an idea of what FaZe Clan did last game, saw it, and thought, hmm, this one might be okay for us as FaZe is going to come through, and they might be a little bit surprised depending on how this goes. Uh, right now, this is a massive split from them. Okay, whenever you get this circle after a remake, it's just the same thing you saw a second ago. Everybody should know exactly how they're wanting to approach this. We haven't seen too many mix-ups. Really, it's just that wild card split way off towards the west. FaZe is trying to approach inside of this, and Ostrolovac has decided, well, <laughs> if I can't go anywhere, then I just might as well commit to living inside of this position for right now. Uh, no grenades really coming out from anybody on the crew from Exalt, not wanting to commit into that. So I guess they're just going to leave him be for right now, and everybody's pretty situated at this point. It's very calm and relaxing. Just a couple of pot shots coming out from Exalt and OMK right now. Yeah, it, pretty normal stuff with a circle that's this favorable in the beginning. There's just too much for everybody to work with. Nobody wants to overcommit to anything for the most part. Now, FaZe has kind of stopped up. WTSG is taking an aggressive, aggressive split, a 1-2-1 one, one in the middle of all of this. And here we go. Oh, no. Kickstart out on an island is caught by FaZe. They weren't able to really trick them into this. Well, with the split that we saw Wildcard holding, they really can't cover each other. Kickstart just goes down, and that's going to be about for free. Keenan doesn't have an angle to provide any support, and Wooly's just almost, like, what, 500 meters away from this spot. So that's just going to be some free loot going over towards FaZe, picking up an easy point. But going into what you were talking about with WTSG, that's a confident split that we see coming out from them. They were running a 2-1-1 just all across the center of the circle, and we're just like, wherever the circle goes, we'll just rotate, and if we can't meet up, well, that's fine. We've got a ton of points. We're just playing for safety, and finally, Ostrolovac does get spotted out. It's going to be Shiv that does take him down. 
Yeah, there's just nothing he could do there. There's nowhere for him to run. There's too much open space. Players are too good. They're not going to let you get through that. Good job by Inside Gaming to at least try to go for it, I guess. But now Free Kill is going to go away. I meant to say good job by Exalt Gaming to finally secure that. Can we talk about the balls to name yourself Free Kill and play competitive PUBG? That's just like, <laughs> I'm a free point, guys. It means that you got to have some confidence in your gameplay whenever you do that. Uh, so... Rotations coming into play. Atletico and OMK looks like they might be bumping into each other as they're both making a southern approach onto this. Navi's up towards the north, but almost everybody is pretty close other than that. It's just a little bit of a mix-up back down towards the south, and everybody just trying to see if they can get some downs and weaken each other as it's going to be Ival that finds himself having to jump back into that bus. But there's a lot of aggression coming out from Atletico. Can Page provide some type of support? It's going to be Nick that's getting into grenade range. Ival's just trying to get away from this, but those huge windows are providing a lot of opportunity for Atletico to continue to harass. Him. Paige is going to now have to pull back and away from this. Yeah, Ival, you don't want to be anywhere near those buses. I mean, I'm assuming he just got kind of forced into using one as they tried to make their rotation into the center of the circle uh, on the road north of Los Leones. But Atletico is actually there waiting. It wasn't actually Exodus. Normally, we see Exodus waiting around that area. But this time, it's Atletico who set up shop. Hey, I like it. Modification coming out from Exodus. What's going on right now is apparently not working out too well for him, so just go ahead and try to change things up, see if you can net some more points, maybe play for some safety. But now OMK has decided the fact they want to go back over here, see that it's Atletico taking that high ground position, and it's T-Bone that does have a good sight line down, but never count out Zoidmate as he gets a knock back over towards Page. And now two members up for OMK, and this is a team trying to potentially contest WTSG already losing two members. Yeah, already losing two members makes it almost, almost impossible for them to catch up at this point. Like I said, they needed to average about 12 points a game to catch up to WTSG most likely. And with two players left, it's going to take some absolute heroics from them to get it done. T-Bone and the surviving member of Omican are out. They are going to be okay for now but they're going to have to really snake this out and then try to pick up some kills in the late game. But they stalled each other on this is the problem. So they're going to be able to make it into the safe zone, but it's going to be very risky to move in. They have no information really to work with. So if you just hop in a vehicle and you drive in, that is one of the best ways to die. Unless you're Team Liquid, then you only lose like one <laughs> member and somehow <laughs> manage to make it through there. The best ways to die, Metrum. It really is. I mean, like, we see it very often whenever it's just like, okay, well, it's time to send it. I don't know what's going on, but I want to go center circle, and they just drive through, and it's just vehicle explosions galore. I guess from a viewer's perspective, it is the best way to die. But from your team's perspective, I don't, I'm not so sure. Then, but look, it's just kind of like calling out safe res, right? Whenever you go through there and be like, oh, you guys didn't tell me that there were other teams around safe here, res. right? That's why you often see scouts being employed in there. And we talked a lot in between the games about this real big hillside, mountainside, whatever you want to call it, that's just towards the east of Power Grid. Well, guess what? It is now a huge factor yet again with even more of that cliff facing being active part of the circle. So team's going to have to figure out, okay, do we try to mountain climb our way around this or do we go for long rotations? Yeah, I'm really curious to see how FaZe can hold this. Last time, they were the ones that controlled the western side. Now, Wildcard was over there, but Wildcard had to kind of coalesce and abandon their huge split because FaZe came in there and broke apart the middle of their formation. Now FaZe is up on the north side of Power Grid. Navi, uh, WTSG is heading down towards Wildcard. The Canids are heading towards Wildcard as well, so it's going to get pretty congested up there around the power grid area. Luke putting some damage down into Wolf. Wolf gets out of his vehicle, immediately gets hit by some nice shots from Luke. Shoot to kill, playing that low position, trying to catch people inside rotation. It's going to be Oath that they do manage to get some damage over towards. But most teams actually already repositioning out and away from this. WTSG also finding themselves in a bad spot as they rotated a little bit too aggressively next to Tornado Energy. Now trying to figure out, okay, how do we handle the top of this hillside as multiple teams are starting to push up that point? They have Singularity off to one side, Tornado Energy off to another, Oath back behind them, and potentially Red Canids with some sight lines as well. So you can see WTSG now playing off the back foot, trying to figure out, okay, Okay, this is not going to work, guys. Let's go ahead and try to move somewhere else. But we talked about the danger of hopping into vehicles whenever there's so many teams around and just look at those tracers flying towards their direction. But they do manage to just narrowly make it out of that. Yeah, once again, WTSG losing a member early here in game number two. Similar situation.
rotation for them in game number one. Now, they still have three up at this point, but Raspu trying to connect with that AK, the spray, very difficult to control, especially at that range, isn't able to get anything into them. See, I figured it out. WTSG is like an anime character. Whenever they start losing, the member drops here or there, the power of friendship just pushes them to the next level, and now they must survive for their forgotten teammates. <laughs> so I almost feel like whenever you take one of them down, it pisses them off and just makes them stronger somehow. Yeah, that's they're just they're just strong no matter what you do. I don't care. They've already powered up their you know to Super Saiyan level two. They're, we're waiting for them to hit three, no problem. But I guess as you say in, in Dragon Ball Z, the more characters that die, the more powerful the other characters get. So we'll see if that does actually continue to be the case for WTSG. Waiting for the third circle to make its way through Exodus with a nice little split along the southern edge. The problem becomes for Exodus if this circle shifts away from them to the north. It's tons of flat air area on their way out of it. Metagaming had a great first game, but now when you have to cower down behind buggies, that means it's not going too well for you. Just trying to make their way up that hillside, so lots of trouble coming into play. Finally, we do shift away from those mountains that we were talking about, but still going to make it very difficult. You can see Shoot to Kill making that rotation back around towards the east. Going to have to approach around San Martin, where there's already a team. Exalt was uh, kind of posted up in that side of position. Could be very bad for them. Yeah, I, I like the idea from Shoot to Kill. Unfortunately, there's a couple other teams that have already had a similar idea, including Team Liquid and Exalt. I mean, they're going to try to ride the edge of this, go right out into the blue. They're already taking some shots. That's forcing them out in that general direction. Now, there is a crate uh, falling uh, just to their uh, south, but... It's going to be difficult for them to go for that. There are too many teams that have angles on that. They're just going to bypass it. It's it's just too darn risky to go for that. Navi with a huge split on the west side, a 1-1-1-1. One, 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 one. There is one ma member of Omakin left. That's Vazku. Looks like he's going to be trying to snake things out. WTSG set up mm, center-ish, but the Cannons with a nice little push into the middle for themselves. It is real messy right now with the way these teams are moving out. A lot of separation coming from some of these teams, trying to control a lot of territory. You can see along this road, Zolt's just kind of holding both sides of it, seeing if they can spot out everything that's going to be going through. Omegan, last member up, just kind of playing back towards the side of this. Got to play right along the edge. Going to go right in between two different groups of Na'vi members, so you have to be very cautious with that. Up towards the north, you can see it's going to be Team Liquid. Uh, just a little bit norther of this uh, Navi position, trying to rotate through, but metagaming is just having to cower down off of this position, coming up with shots from Navi, but they are very close to each other. Going to have High again just posted down right next to James, but coming up back behind this is going to be Shoot to Kill, so now Shiv having to look back over on this angle, just shoots Alo out of that, trying to go for a Trixie shot onto it, but going to be Tornado Energy, also taking a couple of shots back down towards Shiv, so he's going to get dropped out of this, providing a little bit more space for Luke 12 to figure out what's going on. His grenade's going to roll through, but not connect, as he's going to die way before then. Yeah, Luke 12 was able to steal that kill. Alo does end up going down to Shiv. STK in a world of trouble like we talked about because other teams had already made this rotation. They're just a little bit ahead of them. Unfortunately, Liquid has one member down, putting some shots towards Navi, trying to get up and over. Jeems doesn't look like there is going to necessarily be able to much do. They're going to go for it anyway, but Hyrgwin's already here. They got to be really careful. Maxi takes a headshot. He is very, very weak. That is a very dangerous play to come through, and I like Hagen's position. He decides, okay, I know I got the damage. Instead of just waiting for the meds to come out, maybe waiting for the res, move into what is a risky spot, get the down onto it, and buy more space for himself. You can see the other two members of Team Liquid are like, okay, what do we do now? If we move down into this, we, we don't want to go out uh, early again. That's going to be terrible. Yeah, absolutely, but they're already two members down. They're going to go oh. for it anyway. Hyabling gets one. Can he get the other? Yes, he does. He wipes out Liquid by himself. That is the worst driving I've seen since Sadokist. <laughs> All right, so with this, got to be very careful with that Team Liquid. That's another early out and 16th plays coming out for them. Meta's doing a great job of just managing to hold that position. Well... The next circle is going to be showing itself relatively soon. Exodus doing a really nice job getting across up and under power grid. That's no easy task. So you got to give them some credit to get there. As everything kind of funnels into power grid, it gets really difficult because the power grid is up on a plateau by itself. So everything around it is on a downslope. And, and, and as anything happens in competitive PUBG, going uphill difficult, leaving it though also difficult, but wow, we've still got quite a bit of power grid in this. So compare back towards the leaderboard. We talked about WTSG being way up towards the top, huge lead over the teams back behind them. Where are the teams back behind them? OMK, one member left right now. Team Liquid, wiped. 
Shoot to kill. One member left. This is just starting to feel more and more in control for WTSG as Tornado Energy has a couple of shots coming out from the Oath Boy. Is going to go ahead and get the down and the flush. Yeah, I mean, WTSG at this point just plays it safe, gets some more placement points, maybe a couple kills here or there. That grenade just going to come up short. Wow, that arc was huge. That one went too far past Melman. Return fire coming up the hill from Tornado Energy towards Oath. Oath has a nice little position up in this hills. However, it's outside of the circle now, so they're going to have to come down, and they might have to go through WTSG. If they go to the south, going to the north is almost impossible with two teams up there. I love this position with C-Sharp Shot playing from. It's very safe. You can get a lot of information out of it. It's almost like a fortified bunker, if you think about it. Whenever you play from these sight lines, you can just see for forever. You kind of raise up off of what is normal sight lines for towards the ground. People kind of look back towards the doors and stuff like that. You can get some easy kills out of that. Yeah, those windows are really narrow as well, so it gives you pretty good cover. There is Omikin going down to Extreme Athletico, dismantling Omikin this one, doing a great job staying ahead of them. Ooh, Snaker is going to get taken down by Melman. Grenade coming up onto the tab as a battle rages between the surviving members of Athletico. Extreme going to get knocked. Nick throwing some grenades, getting backed off himself. Extreme does get confirmed. So now Nick has a lot of trouble ahead of him. He's going to have to push back over towards Navi, but it's also going to be wildcard on this other angle. Here's what's going on. Looking back over towards this, I don't know if Atletico is going to be able to get their way out of this. Luke 12 by himself, still going after the shots back over towards Exalt. Does get the down and the flush onto it. Nick tries to fight his way out of this, but while it's valiant, it's not going to pay off. It was a good attempt by Luke. He's getting some extra points, but yeah, like you said, it, because Shoot to Kill and Omikin have gone out so early here, Liquid as well, this just makes it infinitely more difficult for these teams to catch up to WTSG. So let's focus on what's happening here on the south side of this circle. Exodus, four strong. This is looking like potentially one of the better runs we've seen from them, not going for any of those cheeky little early traps and other things. This time they're trying to rotate properly, stay together as a team, and work together. So now we've got to figure out how we're going to see some of these rotations come through. You can see that Navi is still playing up next to this position where we have FaZe at. They don't want to aggress too much harder than this. They know that there's been a lot of fighting back behind them, so I have to be very, very careful. You can see that it's going to be Zhang that does get knocked. Well, as a couple of back and forth between the Red Canids and WTSG getting caught into a fight. Now we've got Vard as Iroh's taking a lot of damage. Looks like he's going to go back over towards this res. Really just trusting Iroh's like, go ahead, kill them all, my friend. I'll just go for the reses. You just don't allow them to come anywhere near me. And Iroh perfectly fine with holding down that position. We know that this guy can be absolutely nuts when it matters. Yeah, if there's anyone in the world, he's definitely one of the top five I would pick to hold down a 1v4 against another team while you try to go for the res. Iroh, an absolute madman. FaZe, in the meantime, is over here with Navi in a duel between these two teams. Uba up on top, waiting, trying to hold down the northern flank, trying to make sure that Navi cannot get around. However, they already have pushed up a little bit ahead because the battle is going on up in the north between Singularity, Meta, and the surviving member of Tornado, although I say that and he might be going down, Matt. I feel for you, Kumpat, there. You can see he was like laying down, trying to edge back behind the hill, like, please, just, just make it stop for just <laughs> one second. Just make it stop. Singularity's got control over the north with the exception of a little bit of these Meta guys that might decide to mess with them. With the Circle Pop, where we saw a phase, Wild Card, and Navi playing a second ago, they're going to have to go ahead and go for a position. The remnants of Inside Games also over here right next to Wildcard tries to go for the shots onto it, sees two, and is like, no, I do not want to go that way anymore. Now running through the buildings, just trying to get ahead of this, but they have a read on it, instantly takes him down, and with this, we're down to eight teams left. Yeah, so now Uba has leapfrogged ahead of Navi. Navi got held up a little bit by a push from Meta, so now FaZe doing a great job staying ahead of this Navi team. Hayaguin, already five kills for him, of course, four of those on to Team Liquid. He's doing a fantastic job. Meta gaming in general today on Miramar. Looking incredible. Uba is going to get Bastilach as this forces Navi to back off. I love this. Seven kills coming up from these guys already in a position to where they should be safe inside the next circle. Really, it's going to be a bloodbath over here towards the west. Wildcard, FaZe, Navi, all going to have to approach on a similar angle. It should be noted that FaZe did get a little bit ahead of everyone else. So just trying to hold the line on everybody that's trying to approach, but there's so many angles that teams are approaching from, it's hard to get a read on what's happening. Right, and there's so much fire going around, it's really hard to get your bearings in a situation like this. A lot of close quarters combat, so the sound cues aren't as clean Ooh. as you would probably like. Those grenades, that I think flag. that bounced off the yeah. flagpole. Flag oh, the same man. phase, I believe. That would have probably bounced right up next to them. Now, Navi's got to be very, very careful. Wildcard also in contention in this same spot. You can see drawing phases attention. There's so many smokes down inside of here. Finally, breaches out. It's going to be Wooly 
trying to get some information, feed that back over towards their teammates because they've been hearing everything go on, but they don't really know where all these positions are at. It's going to be Keenan playing around the side. It's plus face just runs around instantly, drops him with a nice push coming out from face. Finally deciding, okay, there's too much going on. Let's just push back over towards his angle and take out everybody that's approaching us. And Uba is just on a war path as he just takes down two of the members from Wildcard and they get eliminated. Yeah, great job by FaZe to take take advantage of all the confusion, all the noise, the smokes, the gunfire. Wildcard had no clue where any members of the of FaZe were. They just rolled in there, dismantled them one by one. Great communication, great execution by FaZe, as you would expect from them. But the circle moves to the north. They have to find a way to get there on foot, and there's a lot of teams bearing down on them, including Exodus, but some good shooting. It's going to back them off just a little bit, as now WTSG has come up on the backside of Exodus. Exodus, five kills right now. All four members up, continuing trying to make a push, but they have a long ways to go. Singularity has control over the circle, and Exodus has to run over next to WTSG and potentially phase. So it's going to be very hard to find a path through there. Singularity does get a sight line back over towards one of the remaining members from metagaming. He does go down. Now it's all on to Sparking to try to buy a couple more points for his team. Yeah, Kodak's going to pick up a quick kill for himself as SMG once again having some success here on Miramar today. Uh, yes. This is going to force... Whoa. They just hopped into vehicles and just sent it right up next to the circle, which is going to put them right next to WTSG. Pat Caps is playing back behind everybody, just trying to feed off information, maybe take shots at anything, but really everybody's still just kind of harassing him. Vegas also just trying to hold the line for his team, but Iroh has a beautiful sight line back down to that position where we saw the car stop at. John did go down, but really it's going to be FaZe finally mopping up the end of meta gaming, pushing us down these last four as Exodus is just on foot, trying to fight their way into this safe zone. One of their members is down, but WTSG cannot continue the harassment as Singularity is taking shots on the other side of them. Yeah, so WTSG, one member knocked. They're going for the reds. Vegas trying to spray in there, see if he can catch them at all. Nothing doing for him on that one. He's going to back up, make sure that the other members of Exodus are going to get the revive for themselves as well. Now he's waiting patiently. He sees the top of Ard, but isn't able to get any shots to land with that 3x scope. So Pat Caps up and running. And with a little help from Taylor J there, they're trying to continue to put the pressure on a WTSG, but not able to connect. They're somehow managing to survive through this. They're drawing so much attention, using those vehicles and driving it. Drove every single team to look their direction, and somehow they're managing to survive. Pick up kills as they go. Looks back over towards WTSG. Does get the down onto one of them, but takes a lot of damage. Retreating back off this. Vegas is trying to hold this hillside, see if he can connect with something, but they know exactly where WTSG is. Contained inside that smoke. Can they get the kills onto him, or are they going to have to back away? Yeah, Vard is going to confirm Taylor J. So one down for Exodus. Two up for WTSG. Two up for FaZe. Three up for SNG, who... Once again, quietly making their way into the circle, taking advantage of all this other fighting that's going on. But Uba is going to find Quick. That is a down, and the other members of SNG not real interested in trying to outduel that man. Pat Caps has to be very cautious. He's making the push back over towards WTSG. Gets the sight line on one, but has to be very careful. At Singularity does not spot him out. Cannot quite connect. Finally does manage to get the down onto Vard. Only one member of WTSG up and alive right now as Singularity and FaZe are fighting for control over the circle, and Exodus is just trying to carve a path to get in there themselves. Finally spot out John. That's going to be WTSG getting eliminated, and then there were three. Singularity, FaZe, and Exodus. I would love to see Exodus us just keep wrapping around the eastern part of the circle. Clean up two members of SNG. They might be able to catch them a little bit off guard as they're kind of busy looking at FaZe as well. Uba was looking, but now Uba's going to reposition. Him and Fuzzface look like they're thinking about trying to take down Kodak and establish the center part of this circle for themselves. Singularity's had the circle for quite a while, but they've got FaZe on one side of them and they have Exodus on the other. So they have to be very cautious. And the moment they start taking shots, they're going to re reveal their positions and could be two different Different teams that have opted into taking the shots their direction. We kept talking about the fact that Exodus, we were ex we had high expectations coming up. Finally, we're starting to see the performance coming out of these guys. They've got a lot of their members still up and alive. Eight kills that they're sitting on right now, but can they manage to close it out? Because that's a much needed victory for this team. They really, really want this. They want to establish themselves as the best team in the Americas. That was their kind of goal going into this event. They really wanted to show that they belonged, and it hasn't gone their way so far, but a good, strong final day can definitely give them the ability to make that claim, at least for now.
quick. He is up and over onto FaZe. Gets a little bit of damage in there, but instantly Ooh. dropped by Uba. You cannot give that guy any time to shoot you. He will make you pay. There goes another, but it's Pack Caps, actually, that's going to get that. I figured this was going to happen with Singularity's position. You're going to have Exodus and FaZe now fighting it out as the Singularity was trying to make that approach through. Exodus now moving up to 10 kills for their team. FaZe sitting on 9. They still have one member. It's going to be Kodak that's just watching bullets go over him. You hear about this fighting inside the shade because there's just so much damage going up on top of him. FaZe Clan finally does get eliminated by Exodus. So with this, 12 kills, make it 13, and there you go. Exodus finally gets themselves a win. This was the game that Exodus...